This is a standard sized cat. And this is that same cat next to my new 43 inch computer monitor. Yes, you heard right, 43 inches. It's basically the same size as a lot of TVs out there, but this one is actually designed to be used on your desk. This is the U4323QE from Dell, and it combines all of the pros of a computer monitor with the dimensions of a larger TV. It's 4K, connects and charges your laptop with a single USB-C cable, has a built-in USB hub, yes, that is an ethernet port on a monitor, and can connect up to four different computers at once all using the same mouse and keyboard. Now you'd be right in thinking that this does kind of sound familiar. It's essentially a bigger version of what I'm calling one of the most popular monitors out there right now, the Dell U2723QE. But a 43 inch computer monitor sounds pretty insane, right? I mean, why would anyone want to use such a large monitor at their desk? Is bigger always better? Or is how you use it more important instead? Well. Let's take a look. Now, using a huge screen at a desk isn't a new concept. In fact, it's been gaining popularity over the years, particularly with OLED TV screens, as OLED technology was unavailable in smaller computer monitors until very recently. Now, the problem with using a TV screen as a computer monitor is pretty obvious. TVs are usually designed for watching movies in a living room not sitting close and writing emails on it. You don't get any adjustability, there's usually limited ports, color accuracy isn't great, and features like a KVM switch or USB-C functionality simply don't exist. So this begs the question, why? Why do some manufacturers out there think that there is a market for a 43 inch computer monitor? The answer is actually kind of straightforward, really. There are some people out there with some pretty extreme multi-monitor setups. Stock market traders or analysts, hardcore multitaskers with 10 different Excel spreadsheets open at once, or simply running multiple computers simultaneously. A large screen that allows you to break up its screen real estate into four separate quadrants kind of eliminates the need for a multi-monitor setup, but I'll touch more on this a little bit later on. Alternatively, maybe you just love having a ton of screen space, especially if you set the scaling to native 4K. Maybe your desk setup is in your bedroom and you also watch movies on the monitor when laying in bed and like the bigger size. Basically, there's a lot of reasons why someone would go out and buy a 43 inch computer monitor. So I went out and purchased my own one to test it out and so I could give you my honest opinion on it after using it for 30 days. And by the way, I purchased this monitor with my own money. This review is not sponsored. Dell had no input on the script at all. Now, if you've been watching my other monitor review videos, I reviewed the smaller siblings of this monitor, the 27 inch U2723QE and the slightly larger 32 inch U3223QE. Functionally, this 43 inch version is almost identical to those monitors. You get an impressive port selection with 90 watts of USB-C power delivery for laptops, as well as an ethernet port. Although this larger 43 inch version has a front pop out quick access port. You also get built in eight watt stereo speakers and the screen is again, almost identical, just bigger. So if you want the traditional review content like color accuracy and build quality, I'll link that video down in the description below. In this video, I wanna focus on what's different with the 43 inch version. And more importantly, what it's like to actually use a 43 inch monitor at your desk and some of the associated pros and cons. But before that, a quick word from the sponsor of this section of the video. The Soundcore X600 from Anchor is a premium high-end portable speaker. With a powerful 50 watt output, you can enjoy your music at any volume, distortion free, and without sacrificing audio quality. And there's plenty of quality. The X600 features a whopping three amplifiers and five drivers, and paired with the self-developed spatial audio algorithm, can decode any stereo sound into three channels for the ultimate room-filling immersive experience. Just take a listen to the different spatial audio makes when I turn it on. Now, did I mention that the X600 is also wireless and has a battery life of up to 12 hours and can be charged via USB-C? Plus, all of this fits in a sleek and highly portable metal design, rivaling even the most premium portable speakers 
but without the eye-watering price tag. So click the link in the description below if you wanna get your hands on the Soundcore X600 from Anchor today. Okay, let's talk pros and cons, and let's start with the most obvious thing first. As you might expect, 43 inches is really, really big. And while you don't necessarily have to wrap this monitor around your waist to move it, in some situations, it can be really tricky like mounting it on a monitor arm. Now, conveniently, it does come with standoffs in the box to attach it to a standard visa mount, but this beast weighs just over 13 kilos, or close to 30 pounds without the stand. That either exceeds or comes very close to exceeding the weight limit of most monitor arms. That being said, you can avoid the monitor arm altogether by using the stand it comes with. It's sturdy, provides a cutout at the back to organize cables, and allows for a decent amount of adjustability, which is something you wouldn't get with a TV. The biggest issue I found with the size was simply just trying to adjust my desk setup around the monitor. I found I needed to push it towards the very back of my desk, furthest away from my eyes, so I could actually take advantage of the larger screen size. So if you have a really shallow desk, I don't think this monitor is gonna work for you because you're basically just gonna be like this the entire time. Also note that the most ergonomic way to position a monitor is to have the top bezel about level with your eye line. So if you're particularly short or particularly tall, you might have some issues. If you can deal with the shortcomings I've listed so far, the trade-off and indeed the main selling point of this monitor is a vastly increased workspace area. There's just so much room for productivity and there are advantages to having all of your windows right in front of you and not split between separate monitors. For one, you eliminate that bezel right in the middle and can arrange your secondary windows nearly around the center of your gaze meaning you don't have to move your head as much. Or I can easily fit four almost full-sized windows on the screen at once. And unlike other smaller sized monitors, like a 32 inch, for example, it didn't feel too small. And I never found myself temporarily resizing certain windows to make them larger while I was actively working within them. And you can quickly resize or snap these windows yourself within macOS or Windows using tools like Magnet or Fancy Zones. Alternatively, you can use internal multi-stream transport technology or IMST to turn your single monitor into effectively four separate monitors when using a Windows PC. No external software or display port split are needed. And yes, this is only possible on Windows at the time of recording this video, not Mac OS. There's also an auto KVM switch built in, which means you can use the same mouse and keyboard to connect up to four different computers, as long as they're all connected to the monitor. Now, four computers at once is probably pretty overkill for most people other than, for example, corporate IT workers, but it does allow you to run dual Mac and Windows systems at the same time, like I frequently do. Which leads me to my next point. Just like the smaller versions of this monitor, there is a picture-in-picture -picture or picture-by-picture -picture mode and also a screen partition mode. Now, I found these modes incredibly useful. You can essentially turn this monitor into two stacked widescreen monitors. For example, as the saying goes, business up top and party down the bottom. Perfect for those long and boring virtual work meetings. Plug in your work MacBook to watch yet another slideshow about HR policy updates and grind COD on your gaming PC at the same time. The possibilities are endless, but this is just one of the usage scenarios. Like I mentioned previously, I run both Mac OS and Windows systems side by side, and it works perfectly here. There's just so much flexibility, and unlike a 27 inch or a 32 inch screen, 43 inches gives you plenty of screen real estate to play around with multiple computers. Anyway, getting back to the sheer amount of screen real estate you get, once you get past the initial wow factor, some cracks do begin to show. Just like this Dell monitor, most TVs these days have a 4K resolution. And when you're sitting on a couch several meters away, it looks great. But if you get up and stand an arm's length away, not so much you can really start to see those individual pixels. There's a term called pixels per inch or PPI, and it's essentially just a number that tells you how many pixels there are within one square inch on a screen. Here are some popular monitor sizes. 27 inch monitors with a 4K resolution have a fairly good PPI of around 163. Text is nice and crisp. Operating system UI elements look sharp and images just look so much better compared to say a lower resolution like 1440p. If you bump that size up to 32 inches and then 43 inches, 
at the same 4K resolution, you can see a huge change. The larger sizes have the same amount of pixels as the smaller 27 inch monitor, but they're just way more spread out with more distance between each individual pixel. And this results in a fairly noticeable decrease in image quality, especially if you're used to a really high PPI, like the retina screen on your MacBook, for example, if you've got both at your desk and switch between the two, you can really notice the difference. On lower PPI screens, font sharpness takes a big hit. Sometimes it might even look slightly blurry due to the amount of pixelation. And this is particularly noticeable on macOS because macOS scales best on monitors that use a native macOS resolution, like the 5K studio display or 6K pro display. 4K still works fine and looks pretty good. It's just not quite as sharp as a native resolution. And bear in mind, Windows does not have this issue and scales perfectly on 4K. And it's not just text that is impacted here, it's images and videos too. Activities like watching movies or YouTube videos are totally fine, although if sitting close, you'll still want to reduce the window size. But when it comes to other tasks, you may struggle a bit depending what it is. For example, editing photos. I recently went on a trip to Japan and was able to take some really cool shots. Now I was using a Sony a7C, which only has a 22 megapixel sensor, which isn't huge, but still allows for some moderate cropping or zooming before seeing too much quality loss. Now, editing photos, or for that matter, doing anything creative on this monitor is incredible simply due to the amount of screen real space you get access to. Not to mention the color accuracy is extremely good, but see my previous review on the Dell 2023 Ultra Sharp lineup for more on that. But when zooming into these photos when editing in Lightroom to see if I was in focus or not, I sometimes struggle to distinguish between if I'd zoomed in too far and it was the actual photo that was blurry or simply the pixelation of a 4K resolution spread out over 43 inches. Now, obviously, if you're doing these tasks professionally, you'll have a more suitable monitor or potentially even just use the retina screen on your MacBook, but the point still stands. For certain tasks, there's just not enough pixel density. And I just wanna stress that this whole low PPI and pixely thing isn't really a negative or nor should it be a deal breaker for you. It's kind of like buying a large car and not being able to park it in a small car park. It's kind of par for the course, right? I just wanted to spend some time discussing it because at least for me personally, it was the biggest deciding factor of whether or not I liked this monitor or not. Now, moving on to gaming, I know that no one is going to purchase this monitor with the express purpose of gaming. I mean, it only has a 60 Hertz refresh rate. It's 4K, so you'll likely need a beefy GPU to push all those frames. And the response time, although actually really good for a monitor in this category, is still higher than I'd like it to be. But if you can sit back a bit and actually put a bit of distance between your eyes and the monitor, it's kind of enjoyable. Competitive FPS shooters like COD, CSGO, or Valorant, for example, are definitely not recommended. But for more relaxed games, particularly single player games, I didn't have any complaints. But Liam, what about pricing? Well, it currently retails on the Dell US website for about 1300 US dollars. However, there is currently a sale making the price about $1,045. And these sales are pretty frequent for Dell monitors. I mean, you'll get it not only on the Dell website itself, but from resellers like Amazon or Best Buy. So let's now take this price and stack it up against some competitors. Now the most obvious competitor is the standard TV. They're quite affordable these days, even the ones with fancy OLED technology. Like the LG C2 for example. It's 42 inches, has a beautiful OLED screen with the accompanying deep blacks, amazing picture quality. It also has cool features like G-Sync and FreeSync and 120 Hertz refresh rate, but it's primarily a TV. So you have to account for all the things like using a TV remote to adjust settings, the stand it comes with has no adjustability, there's no USB hub, or charging built in for laptop connectivity. And the color accuracy isn't as good. Basically, it just has very computer monitor specific features. For some, hey, that's perfectly fine. But don't underestimate how appreciative these features can become if you're sitting at your desk working for eight hours a day. Quick side note here, you can get the previous version of the U4323QE, the 2020U4320Q. I know, these names are absolutely awful. For a few hundred dollars less, 
but just know that there are a few differences between the two models, mainly color accuracy, port selection, and design. I go over these differences in my video on the smaller 27 and 32 inch versions if you're interested. But yeah, overall, I think this is a really solid monitor for someone wanting 43 inches of screen real estate on their desk. It's computer monitor specific features make it much more of an attractive choice over just buying a cheap 4K TV instead. But as I mentioned previously, you really need to decide if going bigger is worth the trade-offs, which are mainly the reduced PPI or pixels per inch, which has a pretty big impact on things like text sharpness and just the sheer size of the thing. Like, are you actually going to fill up all 43 inches with different windows and content and Excel spreadsheets? Just something to think about. But apart from that, I think it's a really solid monitor. Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed this review. If you are interested in picking up one of these monitors and you have any questions, let me know down below. But apart from that, I will catch you in the next one.